you can daydream and fantasize all day long like this is a video game, but this is the real world. When somebody punches you in the mouth and your teeth are on the ground, you, you, you're gonna have to react and most people are just gonna wet their pants. It's Monday, April 14th, 2023. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. Before we do, please take a second, like this video. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell notification down below so that you are alerted when the newest videos drop. And make sure you share all of my videos all over your social media. Without further ado, let's get into what's happening today. Real quick, stay uh, to the second half of this video. I'm gonna throw a little B-roll uh, on this video. I was training today with Professor Elias, Gracie Baja Jiu Jitsu, spoke with him a little bit. We were just talking about the reality of life and why you should be training, why your kids should be training. So if you're interested in that, I'll put that uh, at the end of this video, so make sure you check that out. But let's talk about this article on The Hedge today with Bill Holter. He says, this country has already become a banana republic. Mad Max scenario imminent. He is 110% right. He says more trouble is coming sooner than later. And as I make these videos daily, I've been making these videos for what, five, six years? Uh, I, <laughs> I saw the, the writing on the wall five or six years ago where the, all this was going and now here we are. Just like many of you, you, you saw the amount of money printing, the spending, the deficits, the leadership. Uh, you, you saw back then uh, the amount of debt that we could never pay back and it's gotten even worse today. Uh, we saw the retail apocalypse starting many, many years ago. We saw the vacancy starting many, many years ago. We saw the housing bubble start many, many years ago. And here we are today. Bill Holter says, you can't have a third of the federal taxes paid out in interest and that number is only going to grow over time. He says the dollar is going to take a big hit in the next financial crisis that has already started. And I think that we all have to come to the realization that we are now in a financial crisis. You, you know, people used to write me and ask me, JB, when's the collapse going to happen? When's the economy going to collapse? They're not writing me anymore because their world has collapsed. Most people watching this video have seen their purchasing power be devoured. Uh, they've seen their savings eaten up. They, they've tapped into retirements. Many people watching this video today are dependent on the use of a credit card just to pay for essentials. And that is unfortunate, but that is reality. That is a fact. But many of these people who, who used to roll out of their holes uh, asking me, when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? And I said, it's already begun. You just don't realize it. You don't see it. This began years ago, ladies and gentlemen. Many of you already knew, knew that, but there were a lot of people out there that just didn't see it just didn't realize what was going on. And now they realize what's going on because they have absolutely no broke, uh, no, no, no money, they're broke. Uh, they're working two or three jobs and they're still broke. And this is the unfortunate reality of where this is right now. And it's gonna get much worse as Mr. Bill Holter says, the dollar is backed by full faith and credit of a bankrupt insolvent government and people will figure that, that out. Unfortunately, by the time a lot of people figure this out, it's gonna to be too late. It's already too late for millions of people right now who are tapped out and broke. How does somebody prepare for an economic downturn who is broke today, who has no money, who's in the red, who doesn't have a job? These people are in big trouble. And a lot of people aren't laughing anymore. Many of you would probably uh, read some of the comments and people would laugh and joke and judge and say, oh, this is, doom and gloom, that that's never gonna happen, oh, that's never gonna happen, they'll never raise interest rates, they'll never shut the US economy down. Uh, no, that, things like that will never happen. Uh, nothing will ever happen to the dollar, nothing will ever happen to the stock market, nothing's ever gonna happen to real estate, nothing will happen to commercial real estate, and here we are today, we've watched housing absolutely collapse, the sales have plunged off of a cliff, commercial real estate is is in absolute depression mode right now, and all this is gonna get much worse. And we're gonna see more and more people losing their jobs. Bill Holter goes on to say, this is not my opinion. The debt cannot be paid back. It's not possible. We will default one way or another. 
we will print the crap out of the dollar and devalue it or outright non-payment. That's where we're heading, ladies and gentlemen. The Mad Max world that Bill Holter is predicting, ladies and gentlemen, it has already begun. Take a look around what is going on. I continue to watch these videos of, of the crime uh, that is flooding the streets of America. I see the societal and moral decay that is taking place. And of course, we look at the US economy that is being, in my opinion, propped up by a lot of lies. And I guess if you tell enough people the same lie over and over, they begin, they begin to believe it. And what's amazing is a lot of these people who are completely broke, have no savings, no retirement, no emergency fund. If they had an emergency of $100 right now, not 400, not 4,000, $100, they would be in big trouble because they don't even have $100 saved up. If you tell these people enough times on the television that the economy is doing just fine, these people will believe it, even though they are complete debt slaves, they're serfs, they're reliant on the system at this point, have nothing. They would tell you that the economy is doing very, very well. That's how zombified so much of the public is at this point. It's really, really sad. The television is going to continue and has told us for many, many years now that the economy is just fine. And so many people are just complete zombies watching that television 10, 12, 14 hours a day that uh, tells them that everything is okay. Your wages, real wages, have gone down for over two years now. Wow, the cost of goods and services has skyrocketed. Why, ask yourself, why do you not have any money saved up? Why do you not have a net worth? Why are your vehicles not paid for? Why are you living paycheck to paycheck? Why are you spending more than you make? I mean, think about this. This is the reality of where we're at. And this isn't to criticize anybody. This isn't to judge you, but this is to wake you up. Take a look at the condition that the average household is in, that the economy is in right now. And you have to ask yourself, what is going on here? A Fox poll reported 88% of Americans are falling behind. This is not normal. This is not healthy. In fact, this is extremely dangerous for the future of our country, the future of the US economy. And it, you don't need a PhD to figure out that this economy uh, is in big trouble, that inflation still exists, very persistent, very sticky, not really going down because all you have to do is go to the gas station, put some gas in your car, go to the grocery store, go see what $100 buys at a grocery store today. You'll probably, if you're lucky, get two bags of groceries, and then they're gonna charge you for those bags. Student loan repayments could slam big name retailers this fall. This is on Fox Business. Target, Nordstrom's, Nike, Under Armour, all these may see a financial shock. I don't really care. Um, my question is, what are these people who have not been paying their student loans, what have they been doing for the last three and a half years other than hoping you and I would pay this debt off for them? So now people aren't going to go to Marshalls, they're not going to go to Kohl's, they're not going to go to Macy's, they're not going to go to Nike, Nordstrom's, uh, they're not going to go out to dinner because they got to pay on average their $500 a month bill back to these colleges that they went to, uh, these, these uh, loans that they took out, they're going to have to pay these debts back because you and I are not going to. And that's 44 million borrowers who are about to have to pay up. That's 10 to $15 million, or oh, excuse me, 10 to $15 billion a month that will not be flowing back into the economy, uh, not flowing back into the retailers. Because, you know, these people went out and they had to go buy new shoes and they wanted to buy nice jeans and nice shirts and they wanted to look good when they went out to the bars and to the restaurants and we posted pictures on social media while they didn't pay their debts back for over three years, hoping that we would do that for them. Uh, this is going to, this is going to be an issue, I, I think, uh, partly to the economy, to retail. Uh, it's also going to uh, put a lot of strain, a lot of pressure on households now because as we talked about yesterday, 56% of these borrowers are going to have to make a choice. Do they uh, pay back this debt or do they eat? I mean, think about where we are at in this economy right now as a country. What you're being told over there, the television telling us today, everything's good. Things are improving. Uh, inflation's coming down. Go buy a house. Go buy a car. Uh, wow, 56% of these 44 
million borrowers, 56% are going to have to decide, do they eat or do they pay down their debt? This is the condition of the U.S. economy. This is the condition we're in right now. How come these people can't go get a job? Many of these degrees are worthless. Uh, most of the jobs now are in service, in, in, uh, in the service sector, leisure and hospitality. So they're gonna have a very difficult time paying back an $80,000 degree, uh, $80, degree working in the service sector at, at uh, Starbucks, uh, or at a bar, at a restaurant, at a hotel. It's gonna be a very, very long time before they pay this money back. Um, I think these people should have really thought about taking out this debt and getting a worthless degree. Did they really did they really do their due diligence and think, okay, if I get out of college, I owe $80,000, but this degree is going to allow me to make $24,000 a year. That's probably not a good investment. Uh, if you can even get a job for some for for some of these degrees or for anyways. Uh, many, again, are going to have a very very serious choice here, but we know this, they're not going to be going out and buying new jeans and shirts. They're either gonna eat or they're gonna pay back this debt. And if they can't pay back the debt, what is gonna happen? Comment down below. How are these people, or what will happen to these people if they cannot pay this debt back? Now, I would think that they're gonna tag, tag on uh, late fees, interest, uh, maybe even going at some point after assets, but these people probably don't have any. So they'll file bankruptcy, clear out all their credit card debt, and then just have the student loan debt and the cycle will start all over again. So it's gonna be, this is gonna be really, I, I mean, think about what the next 10 years is gonna look like in this country. Here's another one from the hedge. Peter Schiff, the Fed will never hit its inflation target. Investors, he says, aren't worried about inflation. They're worried about high interest rates. He says a lot of these guys are highly leveraged and they have been gorging on a banquet of cheap money for more than a decade. So we had cheap money for over a decade. We had interest rates at nearly zero for over a decade. We had the Fed in buying mortgage-backed securities uh, for a decade, build, uh, just pumping up a housing market. Uh, we ha we've had the real estate market uh, in a giant bubble, bonds, bond market bubble, uh, all of this because of all this easy money. The reason everyone is waiting, he says, for inflation to go back down to the holy grail of 2% 2, 2 is so interest rates can go back down. Everybody just acted as if rates would never go up. That was foolish, he says, because it was inevitable that they would eventually go up. But no one cared. Everybody just wanted to party and dance while the music was playing. They didn't care that it was eventually going to stop. Nobody even thought about that. Nobody thought about that. Inflation is not going back down to 2%, Peter Schiff says, and I believe him. He said uh, in, in this article, CPI is measuring inflation. It's not inflation. Inflation is not prices going up. It's not wages going up. It's not costs going up. No, it's money supply going up. We just experienced, ladies and gentlemen, a decade of trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars of money printing. We just saw $7 trillion pumped into the economy in a 30-month span. You cannot just reverse that overnight. Now, they are shrinking the money supply a little bit, very, very little, but it's not. Think about how many years you're going to have to, sh how, how many years you would have to shrink the money supply now in order to get the money supply back under control to get inflation back down. And why should inflation be at 2% anyways? We, we would we, think about that. Why would you want inflation at 2%? Why wouldn't we want inflation at 0%? But again, all this money printing, it's not, it's created so much inflation now, there is no way that they're gonna get inflation back to 2% anytime soon. And that's even if you believe these inflation numbers right now, what, what did they say we're at 3.2%? Do you believe that? I mean, that's a joke. Watcher.guru, BRICS, 85% of the, of the world's population ready to ditch U.S. dollar. BRICS. 45 countries have expressed interest in joining the BRICS. 23 countries have formally submitted their applications. 22 other nations have expressed, expressed an interest in joining the group. So we have the Belt Road Initiative, the BRICS, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, Eurasian Economic Forum. Nobody knows what any of that is unless you've been watching people like Andy Shackman, the Peter Schiffs, the Bill Holters. 
Most people can name every baseball player on their favorite team. They can name, name every quarterback. They can name all their favorite football players, but they have no idea when we're talking about the Belt Road Initiative, uh, the BRICS Nations, the Shanghai uh, a Cooperation Organization. Uh, they have no idea what's going on. And this is why it's so concerning that we have a nation that is so unprepared uh, for the next chapter of what's going to happen, this new financial system that, 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 we're, going to, that we're going to witness. Um, in fact, new currencies are coming, new uh, payment systems are coming right now. They're being developed right now. Uh, I believe the BRICS nations are meeting uh, in South Africa, August 22nd, if I'm correct about that. And there's going to be huge discussions. Huge changes are coming. That doesn't mean it's going to happen next month or next year, but they're coming. And I believe that you and myself, all of us, are going to experience this in our lifetime. It's going to be epic. It's going to be a game changer. It's probably going to be bad for most Americans as their standard of living uh, falls through the floor here because most Americans can name baseball players and football players, but they cannot name any of these organizations. They have no idea what the bricks are. They have no idea uh, about gold backing currencies right now. They have no idea about the linchpin that Saudi Arabia is going to play in all of this and how really the world is just going to push us away. The world no longer really needs us. In fact, they don't want the dollar. It's been weaponized. Uh, we've been controlling the world uh, by using the dollar uh, as a weapon and the world's done with it. And it's really sad that, you know, maybe we could have done so much more and helped so many other nations and emerging markets. But what we did was build military bases and start wars and loot uh, many of these nations. And it's sad, but unfortunately, you know, karma is, is coming, ladies and gentlemen. And that doesn't mean that you have to suffer the consequences that your friends are. This is why I believe personally, what I'm doing is buying gold and, you know, I'm moving. But, you know, I know most people can't move. I know most people are, are limited because of work and, and their, their situations. But one thing we can all do is we can buy a little bit of silver. Maybe we can buy some gold and we can prepare a little bit for this. Um, many people ask me, uh, still to this day, uh, who do I trust buying gold? SD Bullion, you can go to my link down below. That doesn't mean you have to buy it at SD Bullion. I've been buying for almost five years now from SD Bullion. Go to my link down below, fantastic company. Buy wherever your heart desires, ladies and gentlemen, and just make sure you're dealing with somebody reputable like SD Bullion. But uh, that's what I'm doing. This is what my circle of friends are doing. This is what my family members are doing. They're buying gold, they're buying silver, because we understand where the next chapter is going. And we understand that the US dollar doesn't mean it's gonna collapse in the next five years or 10 years or ever, but it's going to be a third world currency, in, in my opinion, in the opinion of many other people, in the opinion like uh, the Andy Sheckmans and the Peter Schiffs. Some people believe that it won't even exist in 10 years, that it is gonna completely collapse. Whatever the case may be, whether it goes third world or collapses, you don't wanna be having all of your money in cash or stocks in bonds. You better be holding real money, like gold, like silver. Here's another one, kingworldnews.com. Buckle up, Egan Von Greers. Another massive inflation wave is about to be unleashed. Well, of course, because inflation hasn't really gone anywhere. Again, go to the gas station. Average gas price in California, 505. I've seen regular at multiple stations here from 549 to 569. And they're saying that the world, the globe, is going to be using more and more oil. So you're going to see a surge in oil prices. It's coming. We know that the Fed has failed. And this according to Egan Von Greers. The Fed employees, he says, uh, 3,000 people in Washington, D.C. Of those 3,000, 300 have Ph.D. degrees. So we look at these people to solve our problems to protect our currency, to protect the markets, to protect the economy, to protect the workers. And it's been quite the opposite. We have all these PhDs. We have all these people that have plaques up on the wall. We have uh, Jerome Powell, head of, head of the Fed. And we look at these people, many just think they're gods, that they're gonna come to the rescue and save us, that they're gonna prevent this recession slash depression, that we're going to have a soft landing. They've never prevented a recession. They have never prevented a depression. These people with the PhDs and all the degrees and the plaques up on the walls, they have caused 
the recessions. They have caused the depressions. And this will be no different. Think about the mess we are in right now. Think about all the money printing. Think about the low interest rates. Think about the Fed buying stocks, buying mortgage-backed securities. They caused this dilemma that we're in right now, or a lot of it. They've, I won't say they caused all of it, but they caused a majority of it, or they allowed a majority of it to take place. You could say the US government caused a lot of it, but the US government borrows money from the Fed, and, and the Fed didn't raise interest rates, so the government was in there just borrowing money hand over fist too, because it was literally free money. So. Now the Fed is raising rates, but it's too little too late because we still have a government spending like drunken sailors while the Fed is now raising rates. So one end, we're raising rates. The other end, we are, we are spending money hand over fist. So it's a bad combination. It's not going to solve the problems. It's creating uh, deeper problems. It's mass, it absolutely uh, decimating the middle class at this point. It's decimating poor people at this point. And at some point, very wealthy people are gonna fall victim uh, to this falling economy also, because everything is just being held together with thread at this point. You, 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 we go back to the Wizard of Oz and the wizard in the room pulling the levers and, and pushing the buttons. And it's this little tiny man running everything. And we look at the Fed that they're our saviors, that they're gonna save us when in fact they've caused this entire mess. And uh, the Wizard of Oz is not gonna save us. And at some point they're gonna become very powerless, just like the Wizard of Oz. It's all smoke and mirrors, ladies and gentlemen. It's all a giant illusion. And if you think that the people who caused this mess are going to fix this mess, I personally think you're mistaken. They think that, they're gonna just solve it by printing more money and lowering rates again, the same thing that got us into this mess. That, that, that's, that's the last ditch effort right there. That's, that's the nuclear button right there. When all else fails, we'll just slam rates down and print a bunch of money and uh, that'll fix everything. No, that's gonna put us right back where we're at times 100, times 1,000. That's what got us into this mess. Everybody says lower rates, lower rates, and, and we gotta start printing money. No, that's why we're here right now. How about this? How about the US government stop spending all this money? There are so many places where we could stop spending money. We could probably name 50 of them right now, but we don't have that much time. Maybe that's where it all starts. Maybe we start opening up pipelines. Maybe we start producing uh, more energy here. Maybe we start manufacturing here and maybe the government stops spending money while the Fed starts draining uh, some of the money supply, raising rates, and we start you know, getting this under control. But I don't see how the Fed uh, is gonna do anything when the government's still spending, uh, when oil prices are completely out of their, their control, are gonna keep climbing, and you know, uh, wages. Uh, they, they cannot control wage inflation. So this is a mess, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mad Max Thunderdome without a doubt. And if you're not preparing for it right now today, you're gonna be, I, I believe, in very, very big trouble. And millions of people already realize right now they're in big trouble. A couple years ago, it was fun when they were, when they were buying the Dodge Chargers and Challengers and paying $20,000 uh, over sticker price. It was fun not paying your rent. It was fun not paying college tuition debt. Uh, it was fun just you know, partying and dancing to the music, but the music is now coming to an end. And reality is here for tens of millions of people. And people at some point are gonna begin to panic. And Somebody mentioned yesterday, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close with this, that you know, we're seeing all these malls and we're seeing, we're seeing all these mobs of people going in, robbing these, these beautiful stores, assaulting people, what have you. Um, at some point, the stores close. And so where do they go? They come to your neighborhood. They come to your house, especially when they're hungry, especially when they're broke and there's no more government handouts. There's no more stimulus checks. There's no more benefit checks. There's no more no more moratoriums and maybe no more food. Guess where they're going? They're not going to Macy's and Nordstrom's. They're, they're closed. They don't even care about that at that point. They're coming to your house to see what you got. Stay tuned. Watch the rest of this video. God bless every one of you. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. I'm here with uh, Professor Elias. 
and we just get down with a good hour and a half, kick my butt all over the place. But what did we train today, and why do we train it? Fix, trained on fixing our mistakes for self-defense, just to make sure that we don't have uh, any excuse when somebody attacks us to not be able to defend ourselves, especially uh, making sure we're fixing our mistakes to ensure that that doesn't happen. If you don't fix your mistakes, bad habits are really hard to break. That is 100% true, and I believe like any aspect of life, to be good at something is repetition, repetition, repetition. I think they said, uh, when they talked about Eddie Van Halen being the best guitar player in the world, how many hours did it take good to really master it and become one of the best for any guitar player? And the number is typically 10,000 hours to master something. And so you've done this for thousands of hours. Uh, I'm trying to catch up, but uh, you've got to, if you want to get good at something, if you want to put the odds in your favor, if you want fluidity, fluidity in your life, it could be business, spirituality, your jujitsu, your training, physical conditioning. You cannot just go run a half a mile today and say, I'm in great shape. You can't do that <laughs> once a week and say, I'm in great shape. You gotta keep doing it and doing it, do it. Me personally, two to three days of jujitsu and two to three days at the gym. Typically two days, three days at the gym, two days at jujitsu. I'm trying to get up to three days. But you gotta keep, I think like you would agree, like adding a little bit of weight training to jujitsu is also good and just adding other aspects of your life and practicing them time and time again is going to make you better at anything yeah it's 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 great to push weights around at the gym i think keeping the body strong in the gym is important for your ligaments uh everything that you need to keep tight to be able to make sure that you don't hurt anything in your body but nothing substitutes a 220 pound man on top of you trying to push them off of you no weights that you can find at the gym are going to uh, uh, substitute something like that so you have to go in there and actually put someone on top of you, put yourself in bad positions and escape those situations, even if it takes practicing those positions. We practice things today that we have, haven't done in months just to continue to memorize them and to continue to get our body used to those that situations. Muscle memory, that, that muscle, muscle memory. memory, muscle memory. So that if you're ever in one of these positions, you don't think about it, your body just reacts, it's muscle memory, right? So, but I, I think the professor is 100% right. Look, I like to lift weights. I think it's important for the body. It's important for strength, but there's such importance about learning how to fight and defend yourself that you're not gonna learn from a dumbbell or a kettlebell. Those things do not fight back. <laughs> when you're here, you're always training against somebody that's gonna fight back and put you in a bad position. And you gotta be able to get out of bad positions. You're always gonna be in bad positions your entire life, whether you're in a fight, business, uh, spirituality, dark forces, you're gonna be in bad positions. So you gotta have that, that ability, that training to conquer, that resolution to conquer the evil or to conquer you know, a 250 pound human being on top of you trying to do damage, you gotta have a resolution and it has to be quick. I mean, I, the easiest way I can use an analogy is I mean, the 250 person on top of you. Just imagine, you know, all of these bills, weights of bills on top of your shoulders and things that are coming into your, uh, your, your things you have to pay throughout the entire month. Sometimes that stuff can become financial, very heavy. It's a financial fight It can now. become a burden. If, if, and just like that 250 pound guy, if you don't, if you give up, then for sure that person's going to destroy yeah. you. He's going to destroy you. So if you give up on those bills, if you get up, give up on paying the things that you need to pay to make sure you get this weight lifted off of you then you're going to get destroyed. So yep. don't give up. That's great advice. And, and I'll close with this. You got to make sacrifices. Today, I got beat up for an hour and a half. I'm beat. I'm sweaty. I'm going to be sore tomorrow. But it puts the odds more in my favor that something happens outside of those doors. I'm going to be able to handle myself. And uh, as the professor said, don't give up on life. You got bills, maybe bankruptcies, a car's been repoed, you lost a job. Don't give up. You have to have the fighter mentality throughout life with your spirituality. Satan's attacking you. Uh, the economy's attacking you. We have a lot of violence. You saw what happened in Nordstrom's. Uh, Topanga, uh, Topanga, Topanga, I was just yep. going to say that Topanga, Topanga Canyon, if you're walking at the mall in Topanga Canyon and you, were, it, you saw a mob of people, I'm not saying you'd be able to defend yourself against all those people, but like... JB said, put the odds in your favor. What if one of them I wanted mean, to confront you? If, I mean, those guys, they, they chose that day to rob Nordstrom's, but what if they saw you walking and thought, this could be another target that I'd like to take advantage of? You have to be able to make sure that you aren't that target. And that older uh, elderly woman who worked at Walgreens, who got assaulted by the teenager, threw her down on her back and pummeled her. Now, I don't know what you're going to do at 80, or you're probably going to have to go to other means to defend yourself. But right now, if you're physically able, and you're younger, uh, 
you should not and would not allow that to happen to you. So imagine you're at work and you confront a shoplifter and now they grab you, put hands on. You're going to have to deal with it. There's no there, going there's, back. You can't, ex it's, it's like that 250 pound person on your chest. You have to do something about it. So yeah. are they going to, are they going to pummel yeah, you? Yeah. And what, what are you going to do? Like, I mean, you have to, and, and if you've never experienced that before, if you've, if it's the first time that happens to you when you're at work and somebody comes and puts their hands on you, then it's gonna be a huge shock mm -hmm. to you mentally and it'll be difficult for you to be able to react the way you think, especially since you've ran that mile and a half earlier that day and thought that you were in great shape right. and could defend yourself. Right. Put somebody on you, put yourself in bad situations, go and train and learn how to be able to escape or feel at least comfortable in those situations enough that you can defend yourself to be able to live another day. That's a, that's a great point. We said this many, many times that I know a lot of people sit there on their couches and they're lazy boys and they go, I would do this. I would do that. I'd hit him with the left uppercut, left jab, you know, and oh, that's what I would do. This is the real world, ladies and gentlemen. I watch these videos every day, just like you, of kids being bullied, kids being assaulted, uh, women being assaulted, men being assaulted, uh, shoplifters just beating people in stores, the knockout game, uh, robberies, thefts, and all this violence that's taking place throughout America. And you can daydream and fantasize all day long like this is a video game, but this is the real world. When somebody punches you in the mouth and your teeth are on the ground, you, you, you're gonna have to react and most people are just gonna wet their pants, but some people choose to be victims and some people choose not to, to stand and fight and not allow themselves to be victims. Win, lose, or draw, at least if you tried and put up a fight, more than likely you're gonna sustain less injuries than letting somebody just beat you. That's it. Just, I mean, I, and the, you know, I love our police. I, I love everything that they do, but the, the response times because of their demand, especially with crime, you know, is average around seven to eight minutes, at least in the area that we live that's in. That's if you're and, very uh, lucky. And that's, that's, that's if you're lucky. So, you know, can you survive for seven to eight minutes against somebody attacking you until help comes? Ask that question to yourself seriously. And if the answer is no, do something about it.